Now let's talk about how we can become a good modeling team member. And to do this, we're going to use Antward's awesome aircraft model. Uh, he's one of our authors. This is one of the kinds of models that you'll be able to create as a DT subscriber. And I want to thank him for letting us use this. Now I've gone back and, and used an earlier state and kind of made a few changes to this just so we can illustrate some of the things that we need to think about as we start to uh, finish up a model and begin to deliver it out to the next team member. So you might think, you know, what does being a good team member have to do with modeling? Modeling, even if you're part of kind of a one woman or one man team, you still want to prepare your model in such a way that when you get through to rigging and, and the rest of the, the disciplines that are going to be involved in getting your project done, you want to have done that preparation here at this stage so that your life becomes a little bit easier. You want to be able to, you know, access different parts of your model and know what they are and be able to uh, to have specific names for those. You don't want any issues with the geometry popping up um, as you move down the pipeline. You know, whether you're working in a, a very small pipeline or you've got hundreds of people working on a feature film, you want to think about the next person in line. You know, if that's you, you're going to be working on it even better. You're thinking about making your life easier down the road. If it's someone else, you're thinking about making their life easier, getting that asset through the pipeline without having to come back to you for changes. Okay. And so that it sounds kind of maybe crazy or simple uh, to think about that that's an important thing, uh, but it really, really is. So let's talk about a few things that we can think about. So one of the things to think about is uh, the normals. You don't want any reverse normals. You want everything on the object to be facing the right direction. Normals are just kind of the, the outside versus the inside of a 3D model. And one way that I'll just quickly check usually is just go to lighting. I'll turn off two-sided lighting, and if something turns black, then I know that, that those normals are reversed. So it's thinking that the outside of this engine is actually the inside. So all you have to do is go to normals, and then we'll just reverse those normals and they'll be facing the right direction. So checking normals is a good thing to do uh, when you're prepping your model. You can also you know, check the scale. You want the scale to be correct and consistent with the rest of the assets coming through the pipeline. You want it also to be uh, the pivot of the object to be placed in the right, dire in the right spot. Uh, right now, we don't even have a hierarchy set up. Let's go into our outliner, which is going to be a really valuable uh, kind of uh, window here to work in. And so you can see we have all of our different objects and so what we can do is begin to set up a good hierarchy because we're not going to want to send this through the pipeline just like that with all these separate pieces. That's not going to work. And so we're going to hit Control G to group that together. And then we can create an overall name. So let's say we call this uh, uh, vertical takeoff and land. We'll just call it VTOL. Okay. Now the actual naming convention can be totally different. It can change based on what you want to do, based on your pipeline. Uh, for me, I'll go ahead and under VTOL, just to make sure everything has a unique name and I know every single object goes, uh, what every single object goes with, I'll just go ahead and add VTOL to the beginning of all of our objects. Okay, we can also, you know, if we wanted to create subgroups, we could do that. But we just want to come in and begin naming things. So we could call this VTOL underscore engine left. Now you see some of these actually have transforms on those. In some cases, most cases, you probably want to freeze those transforms. In some cases, maybe not, but we are going to go ahead and freeze those transformations so nothing has transformations on it. We want it to be at kind of its base uh, position here. So you can see those transforms have gone away. You want to also check for history. If you have any objects that have any history, you've, you've used tools on those to model, you want to uh, eliminate that history in most cases. Uh, again, in some cases where you've created tubes with NURBS curves, um, that'll be a special case possibly, and you'll want to keep that history so that uh, the rigging can be done a little bit easier. Um, that'll depend on the rigging needs that you have. So you want to go in and rename everything. If you want to, you can also center the pivots um, on those objects, again, depending on what the model needs to do. Sometimes you'll want your pivot in a very specific spot. Uh, you can rename things very quickly, either by coming up here, and using the rename functionality. You can also change uh, names. So if we decided I don't want this to be uh, VTOL anymore, I want this to be uh, Jet, well we could come in here and we could go to modify, search and replace names, and we could search, if this was a long list, we could search for VTOL 
and we could replace it with jet. We'll select hierarchy, and now anywhere that it finds the word, that string, VTOL, it'll replace it, if I can spell, it'll replace it with jet. So go in here, and now it's jet. Okay, the main thing is that we've got very specific, very unique names for all of our pieces of geometry. Uh, we've got the normals the way that they should be. You can also go in and use the cleanup functionality to check your model. You know, depending on the pipeline, you may need to have only four-sided polygons, or you uh, maybe it needs to be triangles, all triangles. Um, usually, no, usually n-gons are frowned upon, but depending on the needs of your pipeline, you can check it uh, using the cleanup functionality found under uh, mesh as well. Okay, so. Uh, the main thing that I wanted to kind of get across to you is the fact that we're not working as a modeler. We're not working in a vacuum. You know, we can sit here all day and, and build up this great model. And then if we don't pay attention to the hierarchy, we come in here and there's all of these uh, pieces. Now, this looks fine, but there's, you know, if you start from scratch, you've got all a, kind of a basic polygon. If I were to go in and create, uh, let's say, a, just a cube, you know, it's just a P cube one. And you start to bring in 10 of those different cubes it's really hard to tell what is what. So keeping things organized is really going to make your life easier and it's going to make the lives easier of those artists that are down the pipeline. It's always good to be a good citizen. All right, so um, the projects like this are what you're going to be able to build through Digital Tutors. We have a bunch of different projects from these uh, aircraft models. We've got characters. You're going to be able to go through and build these from scratch step by step. And then really the idea is that then you can build your own design step by step because you've gone through that process on something else. Okay. Um, we've got courses that are based on a specific software. And then we've also got courses that are more based on projects, on building a plane, building a certain type of car, uh, really anything that will fit your needs. Okay. Now, really, it's been so much fun for me spending the last 30 minutes with you learning about modeling in Maya, something I'm really, really excited about. And if you want to get started today building a future in 3D modeling, if it's that something you've gone through this and you think, man, I really, really enjoyed that. I want to learn more. Sign up and we'll help you get where you want to go. Thanks so much for joining us.